And we're back! Welcome back to Tiki Tuesday, everybody. It's been far too long since I've seen all of you. So welcome back. We're going to have a great time tonight. Making some tiki drinks, creating some tiki artwork, and uh, just having fun with all things tiki. So nice to see everyone. Feel free to hop on the chat. And uh, tonight's cocktail is going to be the classic Mai Tai. So yes, we're doing the Mai Tai. This is the, the classic Mai Tai. There you go. It's the one we're going to be making tonight, inspired by Trader Vic. Give that a nice little shake. Oh, that's going to be nice and cold. I don't know, how do you like your Mai Tais? Do you like them more pineapple or more lime? I tend to go a little bit more on the lime side with mine. Let's see if we can get that on the camera there. There we go. It's got a nice color. Oh yeah, look at that. Hello, Catherine. So great to see you. Thanks for resubscribing. Long time no see. Well, now that Catherine's here and a few others of you are here, We've got our Mai Tai in hand. Cheers to all of you. Ooh, that's good. It's been way too long since I've had one of those. You guys, let me know what you're drinking tonight. Inquiring minds want to know whether it's a tiki drink or not. We definitely want to hear all about it. Catherine says, we've missed this. Hey, I've missed it too. You know, I'm not going to go on too much about it, but the last eight months of my life have been spent on one project that is uh, finally complete. And hopefully in the weeks ahead, I'll be able to tell you more about it and when it's going to be live and where you can see it and all that stuff. But it definitely took up all of my waking hours for <laughs> the last few months it's been pretty crazy but it's done i'm trying to get back into the swing of things with tiki tuesday and sketches and everything else so it's good to be back it's good to see you guys it's gonna be a good time i'm sure whitney says catherine is enjoying a coke zero with sugar-free coconut and dark rum light rum and pineapple rum okay so you're kind of i don't know so we, we have to name that because that's not really a Cuba Libre. You might have to have a, you have to come up with a name for that. Catherine says, is this project the longest you've ever done? I would say so. The longest illustration project where I was actually working continuously for those eight months on one project. It was eight illustrations, but one project. So yeah, definitely one of the longest, uh, one of the longest that I've done for sure. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it was supposed to be, you know, three months, maybe four months. So, I mean, I knew it was going to be involved going in, but it definitely, uh, you know, you, there was a lot of stakeholders. <laughs> That's one way to put it. A lot of stakeholders. So, you know, a lot of people that had to have their voices heard and lots of adjustments and kind of like reboots several times through the project so it was uh, very interesting to work with like a governmental agency i guess is the best way to put it uh whitney says i'm having a four noses sour ale with meyer lemon blackberry and agave nectar blackberry lemonade stand Ooh, yeah i like the name of that the blackberry lemonade stand that's a good one well i think we need to come up with a uh, a name for uh, Catherine's drink because that sounds like it's deserving of a name you know I think so I think so hold on a second guys I see that the camera's rocking let me see if I can fix that okay I backed it away from my desk by like an inch and we'll see if that uh, if that makes a difference or something. So I think it does. It looks a little more stable now. 
All right, so that's good. Yeah, I like the sound of that. The blackberry lemon lemon lemonade stand. Yeah, wow, that does sound good. I could get on board with that for sure. Definitely. All right, where are we gonna start with this? So this is the Barker Bird from uh, Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. I put a little Tiki Idol in here too. Really loose sketch. I know sometimes you guys get on me about my sketches being a little too tight and everything being a little too worked out in advance. So did a, a really loose sketch tonight. So I think we'll just um, just kind of dive in and see see where it takes us and just kind of work some of these colors in. That nice little green and gold mixing there. Uh, Whitney says, they've done a series of these, but this might be my favorite. Oh, cool. Well, you know, I, a lot of people think I'm not a beer drinker, and that's not true. I, I, I do enjoy my liquid carbs now and then, um, but I'm definitely not a connoisseur. It's more like, it's a hot day, and Christy and all of her friends are playing tennis, and they have Coronas, or it's, you know, you're at an event, and, you know, a sporting event or something, and you know, the main beverage they have is beer. So I just, I had, I, I don't dislike it, but I'm not, definitely not like, well, that's not true. There's a couple, but you would never find them out. So like, um, I think like Duvel is probably my favorite beer, um, which I guess it should be because it's like a gazillion percent alcohol. So maybe that's why I like it, but I think I just like the flavor. But I like Duvel quite a bit. And, um, like the Tripel Carmelette and just kind of the, the, some of the Belgians and some of the German kind of stuff. I don't know. Just kind of my thing, I guess. But yeah, it's always, it's kind of weird when you're, people are like, oh, you know, you're the whiskey old fashioned guy or you're the tiki guy. And it's like, no, I do like a little bit of everything. So just kind of depends on what it is, you know. And I've, I've been playing with a lot of cocktails with Amaro in it recently, um, which I really enjoy playing with. And so I'm sure we'll have a couple of those on the channel sometime soon. Surprised not to see Quench Press. He had chimed in on uh, Discord. So I thought he was gonna be here. And I think Bex is listening with one ear while she's playing trivia with, uh, one, on one of her other channels tonight. So you've got competition with Trivia Night. What are we gonna do about that? Uh, Whitney, redeemed to hydrate. Cheers to you, Whitney. It's this beautiful, beautiful Mai Tai. I don't know if you guys can see this. This, uh, this uh, Mai Tai glass, this is from, let's see if we get on there. Can you guys see that? From the bamboo room in Savannah, Georgia. Savannah. Oh, that's a good one. But yeah, speaking of cocktails, a couple of things. Um, I've been reading this book that Christy got me, The Gilded Age of Cocktails. Fantastic book. Like, absolutely fantastic. And what it is, is it's got, it's like history of different parts of the cocktail age but then interspersed in with the history will be some recipes. Like you can see, we've got a couple of them there. Uh, the Shandy Gaff and the Harvard, right? So fantastic book, like what a great read. Uh, it's, it's really, really been good. Um, I know I shared a Amazon link um, on, um, on Discord earlier, but I can share it here as well. So let me just pop this in the chat. Uh, Gilded Age of Cocktails, and give me the link. There we go. All right. But um, it's, I mean, you know, I'm not the type of person to read like a book every week or anything like that, but like this is great because you can sit down and you can just like read a chapter and like get into it. Or, um, you know, sit and read the whole thing, but it's it's been really good and I highly recommend it. Like it's, especially because it has recipes in there too. So it's it's been really fun. 
yeah, I definitely recommend that one. Catherine's like nice. Yeah, it's it's been it's been cool, and um, there's definitely a few in there I'm like dying to try because uh, they sound really yummy. And then when you have the story to go with it, you know, like this person went to this part of the world and dealt with this adversity, and then like this was the others you haven't, and you're just like, oh, I I want to try that. That sounds really really intriguing. So uh, that's been kind of kind of fun to just kind of sit and, and read some of that. So yeah, definitely worth checking out, I would say. All right, so just trying to lay down some color on our Barker bird. Now he's got a lot of blue in him. Blue is always a little tricky because it always, something about the blue pigment, it always wants to get really streaky. So we just have to roll with it. But that's okay, we'll make it work. We will make it work. Well, we won't make it work with that big blob on the end of the brush. Jeez, what's going on there? So we're just kind of doing like a stylized version tonight of the Barker Bird. Kind of wanted to stay away from anything that was like too photo representational or anything. Just go a little bit more, kind of my normal color blocky kind of style. Kind of loosen up a little bit. See what kind of fun we could have with this. Just a nice way to unwind after a long day. I, I did a bunch of work on an illustration day. Well, kind of finished it up with the client approves and then uh, started on a couple of comic book pages. So this would be just nice relaxation. <laughs> when he says you're out of practice. Well, I'm definitely out of practice um, on the, the live sketch paintings for sure. But I've been doing a lot of illustration work. Um, Catherine says, hey, is this the same bird from Mary Poppins? It feels like they recycle characters sometimes. You know what? I thought the exact same thing, Catherine. I didn't see where anyone else had brought that up, but that was my exact first instinct, was that the Barker bird looks a lot. Especially if you look at the actual, like, uh, Tiki Room version of the Barker bird. I think he looks a lot like the the parrot from Mary Poppins. So it wouldn't surprise me if it's like the same, either the same design or the same artist or even like the same sculpt or something, you know, because they do look really, really similar, I think. So yeah, I would not be shocked by that. You know, and there's nothing wrong with, with reusing assets, especially back in a time when there was no way to to play things back, right? I mean, there was no home video, there was no way to record things. So when they would, you know, do stuff like that, they, it wasn't like now where we have access to everything and we can go back and be like, that's the same thing you used on the other thing. You know, it wasn't like that back then. Randy Cakes says, hey, hey, good to be back. Great to see you, Randy Cakes. Um, I hope everything's going good for you guys and that uh, and that your Etsy store is doing really good. Please drop your um, Etsy store link for Clark and Dagger uh, in the chat, please. I got an update from Etsy the other day that you guys had some new product coming out. I'm really excited for you guys. I hope it's going really well. Hey, there's Monique. Hi, Monique. Good to see you. Long time no see. Definitely have to catch us up on what you're up to and if you're having a cocktail tonight or not. And it, even if you're not, if you're still doing your cocktail machine, uh, not sponsored link, I don't know what we call that. Referrals, right? So referrals. My brain, I'll tell you what, I, I have the hardest time coming up with words sometimes. It's very, very frustrating. It's why I always say that like, I think I became an artist because it's really the only way I can communicate. You know, everything else is just like, blah, words, blah. Uh, Monique says, I can't see you, my screen is black. Hmm, maybe turn your screen on. No, I don't know. It, 
it says that I have I'm on live and everything's good. There you go, Randy Cakes shared the link. Have you guys always had that domain? Did you have just an Etsy domain before? But it's ClarkAndDaggerCo.com. Quinch Press says Aloha. Maha. Wow, 15 month streak. Wow, thank you, Quinch Press. Thank you so much. Especially since I've been MIA for a few months. I appreciate you. You and Catherine and everybody else who, who continues the support even when I was disappeared. But we're back. We're back for Tiki Tuesday. Uh, should be should be back to our regular schedule. I know we have at least one date in September where I probably won't have a Tiki Tuesday, but um, otherwise it should be pretty stable right now. So, And then I've had a lot of people asking about sketches. So, uh, you know, we'll see if, um, if it works out that I can bring back the live sketches or not. It'll just depend on, on scheduling right now. So uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm doing a lot of comic book stuff right now. Uh, so that's been good. I wouldn't say a lot, but enough, enough comic book stuff right now. And Christy, you know, it's her first week back in school in person. So yesterday was her first day back in school. Uh, every one of her classes is filled to capacity. So there seems to be a lot of demand and her school is doing the right thing. They did a mask mandate in the school even though our governor said he's going to cough their funds they're like we don't care we want our students to be safe so i thought that was pretty cool um oh randy says that um they've been working on some new stuff for the store and they did they've, they've got both they've got the etsy you know dot com slash whatever and then they have the clark and dagger co that goes to the same place so yeah go see them however you can find them um, I saw some of the stuff they've been doing. It's amazing, so definitely check them out. Uh, yeah, that's right, Quinch Press. That's how I start out the show. That's like the first words out of my mouth when we went live tonight was, and we're back! Because <laughs> it does feel like it's been a little too long. But here we are. We are back again in the land of Tiki. So cheers to all of you guys. And I know it's been a long time. Don't forget you got those hydrate buttons and stuff. So don't go crazy. I got I got to paint this still. Uh, but they are there. All right, what are we doing with this guy? So just kind of roughing him out a little bit. I think what I want to do is this light blue for like the inner part of his head. I don't have to do any black line tonight. We'll see if that's a good thing or not. I don't know. I mean, you know, my digital illustrations, I don't use any black lines. So I thought, well, it'd be fun to do one. I think we've done one or two in the past without black line, but not very many. Like, I usually throw down some inks because it just makes it easy for you guys and for me. So, um, we'll see. You may have to go back with some colored pencil, maybe do some little line detail or something. You know, who knows? We'll just have to see how it works out. Oh my goodness, there we go, okay. Uh, Chow Time says, hello, hello, so glad to be back in Tiki Tuesday. First one in our new house. Oh, hey, cheers to you guys. Uh, Chow Time redeemed to hydrate, so this will be the hydrate for their new house. That I've tried to make it to and did not, I'm sorry about that, but cheers to you. Monique says, welcome back everyone. And Whitney had a hydrate too, cheers to you. Thank you guys. Mm. This is gonna be like insto drunk. Um, just so you guys know, I did not try to stand up quench press on his birthday, but um, it was a weird rainy day in Arizona and uh, I took my wife's car and uh, got a flat tire in the rain. So it was really entertaining for me in the nighttime in the rain in Arizona with a flat tire. So I did not make it to his birthday party, but I heard it was a giant blowout with bartenders and for the cocktail culture in Arizona and beyond. Because I think there's a lot of people who, you know, maybe would never get beyond their them to, you know, just go out and explore a little bit. So 
You're, you're doing good work, sir. You're doing good work. Uh, Chat Time says, Randy got a new tattoo as well. Well, tell us about that new tattoo. Definitely want to hear about that. Is it a Star Wars tattoo? Is it a Disney tattoo? Is it somewhere visible or somewhere not visible? If I was Groucho Marx, I'd have some good retort for that, but I don't. And hey, uh, Randy and Chow, what do you guys think about this new uh, Disney Genie thing that's replacing the Fast Pass? Yeah, I want to hear what you guys think about it. And and what's up for pass holders? Are they? I heard they're changing all that around too. So give us the scoop on like all the Disney stuff and what's what's going on right now and how it's affecting you guys or not. Because I definitely want to know. Uh, Quench Press says, I was in Portland last week. I went to Rum Club, which wasn't especially tiki, but was very good. Uh, then I made it to Hale Pale, finally. I think that's the way you say it. If it's Halle Pally, you can let me know, but I think it's Halle Pale. Um, yeah, that's a famous one, so let us know if that was any good or not. And you guys, I am back to the royalty-free tiki music, which I know is not necessarily as good as the other stuff, but um, Twitch has, has, has put out the word. They, they've told us, they're like, the lawyers are out to get everybody. Even if it's in the background, don't play any real music anymore. They even had us take down the old videos, which is kind of a bummer, you know? But it's okay, they're still on YouTube for the most part. Because YouTube doesn't seem to care. They're just like, well, you can't make money off this. And I'm like, well, not anyway. So, no harm, no foul. There we go. It's kind of starting to look like a bird, right? Yeah. Um, Monique says, dang, I missed out on that. It sucks to be so far away. Uh, Chow Nine says, don't get us started on it, F it. Oh, well, Chow, I want to get you started. I want to hear about... I want to hear about your take on all that stuff, on the Epcot remodel, on the changes to FastPass, on the changes to being a um, season pass holder, and like, what do you think it really means for people who live there in Orlando? I, I mean, I, I, I care. I, I do want to know. Um, Monique, ready to posture check? Oh, thank you, Monique. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, but that was a crazy neck pop. Uh, Randy says the the tattoo of Star Wars is Sabine's Phoenix from Rebels with Phoenix Wings and Tail and I'm looking at it on Discord right now that's lovely that is beautiful I love that well done uh, I don't know who your tattoo artist is but it looks really well done very three dimensional so congratulations to you uh, and Chow Time is, is drinking as much as I am because he says her tattoo is a giant penis which we know is not true. Uh, but it's funny, Chow. Very funny. Uh, Whitney says, here's what's new with us. All right, I'm gonna click this link and I think it's gonna cause me to tell a story. Ah. So it looks like Whitney and Catherine, they've got a beautiful black lab pup, and they've created Instagram for him. Oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. Oh my goodness. It's cute overload. That's fantastic. Everybody be sure to follow. So now you have 13 followers instead of 12. I'm sure it's gonna blow up to thousands really fast. Very, very cute. Monique, subscribe to Prime. She's on an 11 month run. You know why? Because it don't cost you a dime to subscribe to Octopolis with Twitch Prime. That's right. I know that all the Amazon Ring doorbells are listening, so I gotta gotta stay on my game for that stuff, you know. That's right. It don't cost you a dime with Twitch Prime. Um, Quinch says, Holly Pale was great. 
I went two nights in a row, had some great drinks, and tried a really nice rum. Well, if the rum was nice, it probably had a name, so let us know what the nice rum's name was so that the rest of us can also check out the nice rum and add it to our repertoire of rum drinks, rum beverages, rum tastings, I don't know, something with rum. Something, something, something rum. This is getting a little sloppy around the head, but we'll, we'll clean it up. We might have to get the color pencils out later and just give all this a little, a little clean up. Um, Randy says, they're trying to get rid of pass holders. They don't make money off of us, so taking away all the free benefits will make people not get passes again. It's an absolute money grab. You know, I've been hearing the same sorts of things, Randy. Um, yeah, definitely hearing that sort of stuff from people that... They're just trying to maximize the uh, you know, revenue per visitor. And with this new reserva or the reservation system that they implemented during COVID, you know, they know exactly how many people are going to be there every day and how much food and beverage they need and how many employees they need on, on site and everything. So why would they, you know, why would they revert back to the previous system when they can make more money with less visitors. So it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, it's it's a little kooky. And uh, I don't know, happiest place on earth is what, what we've always said. But you know, you can't just show up and get in now. You have to have a reservation. You can't necessarily park hop. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things going on. And uh, there will probably be some pushback from people who are, uh, have, you know, been around for a while. And, but I think the pass holders are getting really the short end of the stick, it seems like, because, you know, they're there year after year, good or bad. And, uh, you know, the message is kind of like, hey, we don't care. We don't want you. We, we're going to make our money off of the reservation system. So that's really unfortunate. I hope that you know, what, what needs to happen? That's the question, right? What needs to happen for them to to change their mind? What needs to happen for them to, you know, go back to a version of the system that, that is maybe offers some value uh, to the pass holders? Because I think that's really what we're talking about, right? It's a value thing. It's that, you know, there's plenty of uh, profit in it for them, but where's the value for the people attending? And I think that's the question. I mean, you saw the prices on the Star Wars hotel, right? Like $5,000 for two nights for two for a couple, and you only get one day attendance to Hollywood Studios? I mean, that's, that's steep. All right, I've been talking too much, so let's catch up on the chat. Uh, Whitney says, um, our Alexa lights up with your Prime theme song. Oh, that's crazy. You're joking. I'm sure that's not true, but that'd be funny. Every time I say Twitch Prime, it's like... Blah, blah, blah. Twitch Prime. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Chaldheim says, was able to snag Plantation Stiggins Pineapple for 17 bucks. 17 bucks. It's a steal. Uh, Randy says the new CEO must have came from the gap. Well, no, the weird thing is that the CEO of Disney was the parks guy before, right? Isn't that the deal? He was like the head of parks, which is which is what I find the most odd. It's like, I mean, what, did he have all these ideas to like screw extra money out of people like ahead of time? And, and it's like, he's like, well, now that I'm in charge, I can do all this stuff that no one would let me do. <laughs> Bob Iger, uh, he was more creative, creative. Think, oh, create the things and they will come. And we did. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, Quinch says Myrtle Bank 10 year Jamaican rum with a link. Oh, this is the rum that he had that he liked. Okay, good, good. Oh, that's a cool label. All right. 10 year old Jamaican rum. Woo! It's spendy, guys. It's spendy, but according to Quinch, it's worth it. So there's one to think about. Um. Quinch says, I have a bottle arriving tomorrow. 
Monique says, I've got a little family member too, or a new little family member too. He doesn't have an Insta account, but then again, neither do I. Uh, Monique, uh, oh, okay, she's putting some stuff. Catherine's like, tell us more. It's like, it's, it's like Rocky Horror Picture Show. Tell us more, tell us more. Uh, let's see what we got here for Monique. A couple of pictures it looks like. Oh, it's a cute little kitten. How sweet. Okay, well, I'll, I'll finally tell my story then. So, um, we have a neighborhood cat. And I know before we took a hiatus, um, I told you guys that the cat had had kittens and she moved the kittens and we didn't know what was going on with her and all this kind of stuff. Well, uh, those kittens were pretty wild, but Christy was able to, to connect with the neighbor where the, where the cat had moved the kittens and get them all adopted. So that was good. But in the meantime, the cat got pregnant again and she had the kittens in our backyard again. Only this time, she chose to keep them in her backyard instead of take them away. So we now have uh, about four to five week old, six kittens and their mother and their dad uh, coming and going in our backyard. Uh, they're super cute, super adorable. And if the mom doesn't freak out and steal them away again, um, I think Christy will do the rescue thing. But we're hoping the goal is to actually be able to get the mother fixed this time. So that's, we don't know if we can get her or not. She's really, she's really clever. So maybe it won't work, but that's the goal at least is to try to get her fixed. Um, but yeah, six kittens. She had five last time, six this time. So far, all six have made it. We've had some crazy rainstorms. We thought that they died after one of the rainstorms, but they didn't. So that was good news. And um, so yeah, so six kittens. But in the meantime, between the two sets of kittens, right? Because the first set went wild and ran away and then we finally got them later. And then the new set. So between those two sets, Christy adopted a cat. So one of her friends at school um, in downtown Phoenix uh, does like a cat rescue thing. And so we've adopted a two-year-old cat uh, that Christy has named, well, his name was Mr. Smee when he was up for adoption. Peter Pan, that's kind of cute. He didn't really seem like a Mr. Smee though. Um, so she named him Hassan, which means uh, good boy in Arabic. And he is a very good boy, so that seems like it makes sense. Um, but he's this like mottled chocolate brown, but like bitter chocolate, almost black. And so I I call him the Cocoa Panther because that's what he looks like to me. Like that's not his name, but that's what I call him. Um, super, super sweet, scared of everything, like human related. Like he'll just run and hide from everything. Um, and he's got really bad teeth, so we're gonna have to get his teeth fixed. But um, really sweet guy, and he uh, obviously first two years of his life were really rough. So it was actually kind of odd. I didn't know that Christy would want to adopt a adult cat. Like she's always been a kitten person. So we've adopted an adult cat, and he's really really awesome, and uh, you know, kind of becoming a member of the family, which is kind of nice. So our other cat, though Indio, she is not a fan. She has not warmed up to him at all. She hisses at him and chases him and stuff. So that's not good, but hopefully they'll work it out eventually. That's the hope. Um, okay, I'm getting behind on the chat here. Uh, Whitney says, kind of like how all these comic conventions have all these new tiers. You have to be a VIP even to buy tickets. Yeah, I know, er everything seems like a money grab. Speaking of Comic Cons, you see that Wizard World conventions finally went out of business. They're gone. Um, Chow Time says, hey, that was our joke. Our Adventures by Disney trip cost just as much as the Star Wars Hotel. And we got seven days out of it with hotel and food and VIP access to Disneyland. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, look, I'm sure the Star Wars Hotel thing will be really cool. I'm sure that the Imagineers have put all their passion into it and they want it to be awesome. But I mean, the pricing, like how do you, how do you put, the, like, it just seems out of touch with like middle America, you know? And Star Wars should be for everyone. Um, Star Wars should be 
something that everyone can experience. And right now, even if you go to the parks, you may not even get to be on, on the Star Wars ride, you know, Rise of Resistance. You may not even get on it, right? Even if you pay the money to get in there. So I think we have this really weird situation where, you know, there's people who have a lot of money and maybe they get to go to the parks a lot and maybe they get to do all the Star Wars stuff and maybe they can afford to go to the Star Wars hotel and to them it's no, maybe it's a big deal, maybe it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna be the judge of that. But there's other people who they scrimp and save and they scrimp and save and they scrimp and, scrimp and save. And this is gonna be their one chance, their one opportunity to go to Star Wars land. Maybe in their whole life, right? This might be the one time they get to do this. And they arrive at Hollywood Studios and they're not lucky enough to get into Rise of the Resistance. And what's their experience like? And what, because they can't afford to, to pay for the new paid fast pass or you know they already spent all their money just to get there and then disney says yeah we want another five grand to stay at the disney hotel or the star wars hotel or whatever it is you know it's just you know look disney deserves to make a profit they're a business they're in business to make money no one's going to argue that but five thousand dollars that's a big that's a big ask it's a big ask uh Quinch says, yeah, I am never doing the Star Wars Hotel. Uh, Whitney says, oh my gosh, Monique, he's so cute. Monique says his name is HRH, Prince of Dark Darkness, Duke of Floof at, wait, Conk Don Property. Oh, that's so good. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Darkness, Duke of Floof at Conk Don Proper. I love it, Monique. That is, that is the best. I, you guys, I missed you guys. I missed you guys a lot. You know, I do these things and I think, oh, I wish we could get more Twitch followers and more Patreon followers and stuff. But the truth is, is that, like, I just love connecting with you guys so much that, you know what? Even if we never got another follower, it's okay. It's all right. Because we have each other. And that's really what matters. So, you know, there you go. I love you. Right? Straight <laughs> Like Quinch Press and I are always saying from Sorry Mary to Axe Murder, I love you. Uh, Quinch says, I had a one ounce pour of the Myrtle Bank rum. I hope I still like it as much when I get that expensive bottle. Oh, I'm sure you'll love it. And Quinch redeemed to hydrate. Cheers to you, Quinch. Chow Time says again, don't tell Randy that they're adoptable kittens. Hey, we have an extra room. You guys want to come here, stay for a night, take a kitten home, you know, whatever works. Uh, Randy says you need the humane trap. Local rescues can provide you one. Yes, that's what we plan to use. Um, Christy's friend who does the rescue downtown, that's that's what they do. Is they, they trap the kittens. And one of the reasons we have a son is he actually got trapped three times. And after the third time, they're like, well, we're not going to let him go again. He's clearly... They're not smart enough or something to avoid the trap. He wants to be trapped. Um, and he got shot in the butt with either like a BB or a pellet gun or something. And they had to have him stitched up and all that. So he it was definitely time for him to become an indoor cat. So that's what he is now. Hopefully he likes it. I'm not sure that he does, but he's okay. He likes Christy. That's what I wanted. He bonded with Christy, which is good because, you know, Indio can be a little bit of a bitch. And so now she has a cat too. Um, Whitney says, our older cat barely tolerates our younger cat. He does seem to tolerate the puppy. We think he just wants to be the only cat. Yeah, and I, I actually think like, I'm not even sure Indio knows that she's a cat or didn't know that she was a cat until we got the new cat. She's like, wait, I'm a human like you guys. Why is there this like furry thing running around the house? This doesn't belong here. Like I really don't even think she like got it. Like she's like, you know, she's kind of freaking out a little bit. She's like, we're being invaded, other humans. Like that kind of thing, right? So, you know, you know how they are. They don't they don't always get it. Uh, Chow says, are you going to celebration? You know what, Chow? I don't know. I don't know when it is. No one's invited me. Um, 
I can honestly say that since the pandemic started, not a single person from uh, Acme Archives or Lucasfilm or anything has been in contact with me or returned an email or a phone call. So that's all I know. I don't know if I did something to upset them or if they're just, they closed up shop and are coming, I don't know. So I do not have an answer to that. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. So I'm just living my life one day at a time and working on projects I have to work on. And I love Star Wars. You guys know I love Star Wars with, with all my heart and it's my, my biggest passion. But right now, I I don't have I don't know what's going on. So that's all I can really say about that. Uh, so yeah, it's strange. It's definitely strange. You know, I think the pandemic just caused a lot of stuff to slow down or go away, and I don't know when or if it's coming back. Okay, enough of that though. Uh, well, oh, I know what I want to share with you guys though. Let's give this paint a second to rest. Um, I got a new um, I got a new box from Shaker and Spoon, and I want to share this with you guys. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. Okay, so. I got the new um, Summer Scotch 2 box, um, and it's pretty kick-ass. And the reason I didn't make one of those cocktails tonight is it's our first time back for Tiki Tuesday, and I want to do a tiki drink. Um, but Summer Scotch 2 has a couple fun cocktails. The Pretty and Poppin', um, which has got um, scotch and grapefruit, grapefruit and elderflower and agave nectar and some bitters, so we've got that one. Uh, the Como La, <laughs> my Spanish is world, Mayor. Um, and this one has uh, got cinnamon spice sugar and scotch and mango uh, and a citrus cordial. So like a really like a Spanish take on a scotch cocktail. And then the Warm Path, which is, which is kind of crazy, like scotch and strawberry and some IPA, hopped IPA uh, bitters. So some really cool cocktails uh, this month. And uh, I thought it was really, really um, inventive, some of the ones that they're doing here. And when you order one of these cocktail boxes, they send you like all the stuff except for the alcohol. So like this is the strawberry ingredients for the one cocktail. And like this is the grapefruit elderflower for the other cocktail. And then there's like uh, agave nectar, and like a whole bunch of different bitters and stuff that they send you to go in the drinks. So it's kind of cool. I've been really impressed with them. Um, Christy's been giving them as gifts to other people and like we haven't had any complaints. So far everyone's been like super, super excited um, about, about these boxes. And the cool thing is, is you can do a subscription um, if you want to, but um, what you can do is you can just get just the boxes you want. Like you don't have to do a subscription. And that's kind of what we've been doing is we've just been watching and then they announce the next box and you can be like, oh, you know, that one's gin and maybe you like gin or maybe you don't like gin or maybe you don't like those cocktails. You go, I'm gonna skip that one. You don't have to, like, there's no pressure. You don't have anything invested. There's no big deal. And then the next one comes along and you're like, oh, that one's scotch, right? Like me. And I'm just like, I don't care what's in it, I'm gonna get it and try it. And so um, it's pretty cool. I'm gonna share a, a subscription link with you guys. Um, this will give you a discount on your first one. Um, this is not a sponsored thing. I don't get paid for this. This is actually something I use. Um, if enough people sign up, I do get a discount in the box, but so far that hasn't happened. So like, literally I get nothing from this really. Um, but I find it to be really well executed and really well done. And it's caused me to find new cocktail flavors and things that maybe I wouldn't have discovered on my own. So if that's interesting to you, check out the link. No pressure. Again, it's not a commercial. I get nothing for it. Um, oh yeah, Chow Time asked me about celebration and I freaked out. Okay, so what's the next thing? Um, I'm an emotional creature, people. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Oh, Quinch says, my parents never would have paid that much, even adjusting for inflation, and I would have been crushed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Shout says, start an only Tiki's page. That's pretty funny. Um, Monique says, hey, Whitney, thank you. Um, He's a butthead. We call him Chonk or Chonky for short. I love that. Monique says, Spongy absolutely hates Chonky, but the dog has a new buddy and they play a lot. Oh, that's great. Whitney, we're to hydrate. Cheers to you. And Whitney says, ooh, hopped bitters. That sounds interesting, right? I thought so too. Yeah, hopped IPA bitters. I'm like, I mean, that can't be bad, right? That all, that all sounds good. All right, let's get some pure yellow. Let's mainline some yellow here. Let's go really cartoony with some of our choices. Because I get it. I mean, this is, we're 45 minutes in. I don't have very much done here. I got I to get cranking on this. Um, dun, 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 dun. Something else you guys just reminded me of. But it doesn't matter. Talk to amongst yourselves. I'll, I'll just keep painting here. We'll start to get some of this other stuff roughed in. And then you guys can can lead me on a new adventure. Let's see, we talked about Star Wars. We talked about, oh, I know something. Um, I had done some uh, Back to the Future art almost, almost two years ago now. Um, and it was supposed to come out at San Diego Comic-Con 2020. And then of course that got canceled. And they were talking about doing it this year and then that it was still virtual. So that art now is back in my hands. Um, and so for everyone on Patreon, um, that you've already seen it for as far as a free download, but there is going to be um, print versions of that. So if you're on the $35 level, you are gonna get two prints, um, which is the, the DeLorean 40th anniversary and then the Back to the Future one. Now, a couple of you already got the Back to the Future one, but everyone who got that said they wanted another one. So you're gonna get another one. Um, the first and only time I've ever thought about doing a duplicate, but like literally everyone asked, they're like, can I get one more of these? So I'm like, okay. But it is like a double set. They're like driving away from each other. So one's the regular DeLorean, one's the time machine DeLorean. Um, and then we're gonna put that out for everyone else too. So if you're not at the $35 level, um, make sure you're subscribed to my mailing list on octopolis.com so you get the email that's going to be going out next week right before september 1st um, with how to get that and it's going to be you're going to get one of them for free so if you get the if you buy the 40th anniversary one you will get the back to the future one for free Um, i think it's a pretty good deal and hopefully a lot of people agree with that so um, be on the lookout for that you know it's some artwork that, like, I could tell you guys, you know, it was supposed to be a limited edition print at San Diego. It was going to be on a Hot Wheels package, so I was really bummed when San Diego got canceled. Um, but now you can have the art. You can have the art that was going to be used for all those things, and it would have been unobtainable. So uh, now you can have access to it. So uh, take advantage of that. Um, Whitney says, hey, are we allowed to ask about Tiki mugs? Oh my gosh, yes. Please, please, please. Um, so the, the, uh, witch, witch doctor's potion tiki mug, um, I've actually seen photos now of a glazed prototype. It is in production. Um, the last conversation I had, which was just a few days ago, um, with the company that's, that's behind this is that it's in production and, um, you know, we're however month, many months into this now. Uh, so theoretically we're past, at least past the halfway point. So, you know, it could come out anytime in the next probably like 30 to 60 days. Um, my guess is, is they'll definitely have it out for like the, before Black Friday or something like that. So the Witch Doctor's Potion, I can tell you, I was, I mean, Quinch, did I send you a photo of the glazed prototypes? Um, I'm thrilled, like, 
it's exactly what I drew. It's like so perfect to what I had put down on the page. Um, I think you guys are gonna be thrilled with it too. And I can't wait for you to see it. And as soon as I'm able to, you know, promote it and stuff when it's real, um, you guys will be the first to know for sure. But um, it looks fantastic. Um, oh, Quinch says I did not send him a picture. Okay, well, you know one will be coming to you then. Um, but you know, so yeah, it's, it's coming. That's all I can say is it's coming. You know, they warned me in advance. They're like, this stuff takes a long time. Um, and they, you know, they weren't lying about that. It does take a long time. Uh, but I think it'll be, well, no, I know it'll be worth the wait because I, again, I've seen the photos. It looks great. There's two colorways. Um, so when they're ready to accept orders, you'll be able to order, you know, one or both of the colorways. And uh, the sculpt is just fantastic. Now the other mug, the first one, the Tiki Tango mug, I have I have no news on that. Like I was told however long ago that it was in production and everything was going really well and blah, blah, blah. And then it's just been radio silence. So, you know, maybe that'll just magically show up someday. But as of right now, I just have to assume that it's either stuck in limbo or not happening or I don't know what. I mean, I did the, I did the design, they paid me for it, they they showed me the, the 3D version of the sculpt and I approved it and I was told it was going to production and that's been since before Christmas. So I have no idea right now. Um, Whitney says, hey, this is unrelated, but Reservation Dogs on Hulu is a must see, must see TV. I don't even know what that is, but I'll check it out. Reservation Dogs, okay. I mean, that could be a couple different things. That could be like the story of Open Tables founding. That could be something about like Inuit race dogs. I mean, there's so many things that could be. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Monique says, I never got one, but it's a Patreon thing, right? Yeah, so Monique, if you're on the Octopolis mailing list, the Collector's Club, You'll get an email. Um, you'll get an email just right right around September first, maybe a day or two before, but right around September first, and um, it will have all the information. And what we'll be doing is, if you if you buy the 40th anniversary DeLorean print, then you'll get the Back to the Future print for free. So, you know, you can choose. Hey, do you want both of those for yourself? Do you want to give one away? However, but um, that's it's kind of the way we're going to be doing that to sort of keep everybody happy on the on the licensing side of things, which is always important, right? Um, and then we'll see how it goes from there. But that's that's the current plan. You know, it may not go public. It may just be for collectors club members and patreons and stuff. So, you know, definitely make sure you're on the mailing list if you're not already, just so you don't miss out on that. Monique says, I think not being on the Discord channel has me way out of touch with a lot. Well, you know, you don't have to be on Patreon to be on Discord. Just being on Twitch, just being a Twitch subscriber gives you access to our Discord channel. So um, don't hesitate. And you can see uh, Randy's tattoo on there, which is kind of cool too. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, anything to do with Sabine is cool, right? I don't know. So guys, I'm having really a lot of fun with this and I think it's turning out good, but I, I'm kind of questioning without the black line if it translates through the video or not. So you guys, have to, I feel like there's a lot of little detail stuff I want to do to it later, but you guys let me know. Do you like it better with the black line and then the color or is this working for you okay? Because I don't want to do stuff that doesn't read on video that, you know what I'm saying? Um, when he says, Taika Waititi is the producer, takes place in Oklahoma with some First Nations teens. Oh, good. So I was right. Um, have to give it a watch. Greasy fry bread, greasy fry bread. Well, I live in the land of greasy fry bread, so I totally, totally get that. 
I mean, I think I think Taco Bell and their chalupa they they owe royalties to like every every tribe in America, right? I mean, they're calling it Taco Bell. They're calling it Mexican food, but it, boy, it's as close to Native American as you can get, isn't it? Monique says, okay, the Back to the Future print, I remember hearing about, I'll look for the email because I wanted that one. Oh, good, good, yeah. It's, you know, I mean, on a way, I'm heartbroken because of the whole COVID thing and that it's not going to be a San Diego Con exclusive and it's not going to be on a Hot Wheels package. I mean, that's really heartbreaking. But at the same time, I'm just glad I have a way to get it to you guys, you know. I just want you guys to enjoy it and to have access to it, so... Uh, I'm so thankful that I can do that for you guys. Because it would be a real bummer if just it never saw the light of day in any way, shape, or form. I mean, just what a waste, you know. That would be the real the real crime. Um, Quinch Press says, I haven't watched Reservation Dogs yet, but I know Taika Watiti is one of the producers. Monique says, I am Discord dysfunctional. Hey, I get it. When you first open up Discord, you're like, what kind of mess am I staring at? But the truth is you just find one of the chan you know, get in our get in our uh, get on our, our, our main uh, server and then just get on the Tiki Tuesday channel and it's all there. So you don't have to get lost in everything. But I get it. It's crazy. <laughs> but he's like, I don't even know how to get there. Uh, Quinch says this works. Oh, oh, about the artwork. Okay, good. Thanks, Quinch. I feel like I'm not doing enough definition yet, but I mean, you know, I'm just getting started, so thanks for letting me know. Uh, Chat Time says, anyone see Free Guy yet? I haven't seen Free Guy yet. Chat Time, we're going to hydrate. Thank you. But what I have seen, well, I've seen a lot of stuff, but what I have seen is Suicide Squad. So do we want to talk about Suicide Squad or are we worried about spoilers? Because I, I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts on Suicide Squad. But, you know, I don't want to ruin it for other people. I'll give you guys a minute to process that. Monique says, I went and saw Respect. <laughs> Quinch Press says, I really enjoyed Suicide Squad. Okay, that's one person. And this is, of course, THE Suicide Squad, the new film, which is on HBO Max, and I guess these things they call theaters. Theaters? Have you heard of this? The theaters. Not sure what that is. Chow Time says racist underwear and Catherine says go for it. Okay, so Suicide Squad. Um, you know, first of all, Gunn, I feel like he just made the film he wanted to make. I don't know what you guys think about that, but I just feel like he was just like, so DC Comics, you want me to make a movie? Okay, I'll just do whatever I want and use a couple of your characters and no one will be the wiser. So, you know, he made this kind of crazy, gory like action film with Starro as an alien, all this like crazy stuff. And I don't know that, I mean, who knows if DC, like what they thought about it or Warner Brothers. And it's certainly not like the best film ever, but you gotta give him a little bit of respect just for like making a film that clearly was just like something he wanted to make. He was like, I'm not going to worry too much about what's come before. I'm not going to worry too much about tying into your other films and properties. I'm just going to have fun and I'm going to do my versions of these characters and people are going to love it or hate it and I don't care. And you got to kind of respect that, you know, and not in a flippant, I don't care way, but like in a way of like confidence, like that, that quiet confidence that he has of like, you know, I'm going to make this movie and some people are gonna like it. Um, I think he casted a lot of his typical cast people that you would expect to be in his film. And then of course, you know, without giving away too many spoilers, 
a lot of them don't make it through not only just the first act but not even like the first scene so he really like resets things early on with just like you know i'm gonna just obliterate your expectations and just come in and do my thing and i kind of again i kind of respect that because i think that it seems like so many of these movies they're just like it's almost like the filmmakers are afraid of warner brothers and afraid of dc and afraid of the fans and you know james gunn's not he's just like this is how i see it this is how it's going to be you're either on board for this ride or you're not and that's kind of cool uh chat time says i actually got a commission to paint blood sport pistols Ooh, that is cool uh, monique says i watched suicide squad on hbo max but went to the theater for a quiet place to and respect nice Chow says, Suicide Squad was better than Snake Eyes. Ooh, I haven't seen that one yet. Because I don't think it's on a platform that I get. Or maybe it's only in the movies. I don't know. But I do want to see Snake Eyes, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh... <laughs> Chow Time says, but Shang-Chi. Yeah, I, I do want to see that. I do. I definitely want to see that. Is that... That's not on Disney Plus or anything yet, though, right? That's only in the theaters. I did see, though, that... Um, anyway, I, so I didn't even really do a review of the movie. So, anyway, just that he made the film he wanted to make. He used some DC characters. Some of it was entertaining. Some of it was gory. It, it doesn't really feel like it's part of any kind of like DC universe. It's just its own thing. Um, I found the, his treatment of Harley Quinn to be like really refreshing. I don't know what you guys thought, but I thought his treatment of Harley Quinn was fun and respectful and maybe the least sexualized version of Harley we've seen and the most, like I actually thought it was a better version of Harley than even what we saw in Birds of Prey. So in Birds of Prey, they were trying to make her, you know, less sexualized and more kick-ass and I think she was even more kick-ass in this film. So uh, you guys let me know what you think about that. But uh, I thought she kind of stole the show. And um, the actor who played Rick Flagg, uh, the one that's in For All Mankind, I thought he did a really good job too. And of course, uh, Polka Dot Man. Wow, what a cool, what a cool character. Like, to, way, way to take a character that nobody cares about and make everyone care about him. So... Uh, yeah, there's some nice stuff there. There's some really good stuff there. So it's definitely worth worth checking out. And I don't know, you know, is it like long term? Is it going to be like a cult classic or anything like that? I really don't know. But, you know, I still give him kudos for making the film he wanted to make. And not just falling in line with some of the other like DCU films that have been out there. So, you know, respect. Um, Catherine says we went to the theater but we rented it out with friends that's really cool well done Catherine that's the way to do it oh I see the Streamlabs chat bot is alive and well uh, Monique says I was excited Pete Davidson was playing a character but disappointed his part it was like 15 minutes long well I mean I think I mean I don't about you but I think a lot of us had guessed that I mean I think just the fact that he was cast you're just kind of like Oh yeah, he's not going to be in this very much. Like, there just seemed to be like no way that was going to be more than a like a cameo kind of part. But I'm sure there's a lot of people who would have watched it if it was longer. And he was so good in um, what was it Staten Island? Is that the name of this film? Um, God, he was good in that. Like, it just proves that he's got the chops. You know, he just needs the opportunity. Because he can certainly do it. What do you guys think about that new Spider-Man trailer that dropped today? And is it really a Spider-Man movie or is it a Doctor Strange movie? I kind of feel like that's the question. And you gotta be like, well, why would Stephen Strange do that anyway? Mitigating circumstances, right? It's always mitigating circumstances. 
Catherine, you need to hydrate. Oh, goodness, Catherine. I'm going to have to refill here. Give me a second. Quinch Press says, I definitely got that feeling. He was so playing loose and fun with the source material. I still enjoyed it. Oh, I enjoyed it a lot. I think um, pretty much everyone I know who's seen it feels that same way. They're like, you know, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's part of the DCU, but maybe that's a good thing. It's just like its own film. It's got loose ties to the original. It's got loose ties to the Harlequin stuff, but it's just its own thing. Like, you could exchange every one of those characters. Every You could exchange every DC character for a non-DC character, just some made-up character, right? And it would still be the same movie and just exchange Starro for some kaiju or something, right? So he clearly was just focused on like storytelling first and then working the DC characters in second. And maybe that's what makes it work. Quinch Press says, uh, Polka Dot Man was awesome. David Dash Million did a great job. Yeah, I think so too. I think he did good. Um, you know, I also think Capaldi did great. He probably didn't have enough screen time. Like Capaldi could have done even more with more screen time, but you know, he's great in the parts that he's in. Um, if the cast is so big, I mean, you can only give people so much screen time. Uh, Chat time's like, hello, Peter. <laughs> Doctor Strange in a hoodie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Monique says, she was not codependent. They changed her tattoo from property of Joker to property of no one removed her rotten tap from her face because she doesn't feel that way about herself anymore. And her jacket went from property of Joker to live fast, die clown. No more toxic relationships for Harley because she's watching for those red flags now. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought it was a great version of Harley. Um, maybe the best we've seen on film so far. Quinch Press says, David Ashmillian is friends with with my friends in the band Failure and was in a video for their last album and he's got a YouTube link there. That's really cool. Really, really cool. All right, guys, we're one hour in and I feel like I'm not making as fast progress as I should here, but I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun too. We'll get as much done on this as we can, even if we don't finish it tonight. It'll be a good starting point. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe this one will turn into a print like some of the other ones have or something, you know. I kind of like this composition. And I've been wanting to do a bird for We haven't done any tiki tropical birds, and so this seemed like a like a good excuse to just get in and, and do one, you know. Like a nice tiki bird. It's weird. Some some people get excited about the tiki idols. Others like the tiki birds. So, um, Monique says, I sent you a posture check earlier. I was going to send another, but don't let me. Well, I am kind of hunched over, so I'll just do one anyway. Thank you, Monique. I don't know why I won't let you. But who knows? It's been so long. Um, all right, so we talked about Suicide Squad. Did anybody catch the movie Jolt on uh, Amazon Prime with, um, oh, see, now I'm going to blank. Uh, why can't I think of her name? Someone's going to tell me in the chat any second now. The one from Underworld? What's her name? Hmm. Why can't I think of it? Because my brain is broken, that's why. <laughs> Monique's like, I already sent one, I'm only gonna send you another. Uh, Quinch says, I'm waiting for season three of the animated Harley series on HBO Max. Yeah, I heard it's gonna be really good. I did hear good things about it. Really, no one's gonna tell me the name of the actress who played in the Underworld movies and make me feel better about myself. Kate Beckinsale, that's right, Quinch, that's right, Catherine, Kate Beckinsale. Um, her movie Pulse, has anybody seen this movie yet? Because it is redonkulous. 
It has Stanley Tucci and some other big names in it. But the basic premise is Absin like beats the hell out of people and kills them and stuff. And so Stanley Tucci invents like a shock vest that she wears. That she shocks herself. She like she like does a trigger to shock herself so that she doesn't kill people. But maybe someone sold her out. Maybe they figured out her powers. They need to use her for their evil crimes. And so now she has to figure out how to defeat the evil people before they use her. Send or the set designer or something. It has a very much that kind of feel to it. Like, I think the whole thing was shot in like Bulgaria or something. Like it's supposed to be in Los Angeles, but if you're from America, like you take one look at it, you're like, this wasn't made here. Um, but if you like, like it looks like Sin City like had a baby with like some other action film. And I don't know what that is, but um, you know, it's worth a watch if you're into that kind of thing. It's schlocky, it's a B-movie, but it's it's got its moments. And Kate Beckinsale is good in it. And there's a lot of, other than Stanley Tucci, there's a couple of like, oh, hey, it's that guy, you know, kind of moments in the film. And some of the action scenes are really good. So it's worth a watch. It's definitely worth a watch. Um, everyone's like, Kate Beckinsale. Yes, Kate Beckinsale. Quinch says, I saw the trailer and I meant to watch it, but then I forgot about it. Yeah, well, look, hey, it is kind of forgettable, but it is worth a watch. If you have nothing better to do, it's fine. Um, but yeah, that one's worth checking out just for her, like, superhero powers and there's kind of a twist at the end you might see it coming you might not it's okay we'll just say it's enough of a twist how about that like it's not M. Night Shyamalan twist but maybe they thought it was I don't know they're like oh people are going to freak out and everyone's like yeah, I mean, that, I kind of saw that coming. Monique says, I started recording Chapel White, Chapel White on Epics, but I haven't started watching it yet. Yeah, I've heard of that one too, but I haven't seen it. Now, one that I did see recently. Um, oh, I know. I went back and rewatched Hudson Hawk. Now... That's on HBO Max right now. And I had not seen it, I mean, maybe since it came out or maybe since I was a kid or something. I don't know. Oh, Quinch says the production designer for Jolt also worked on both kick-ass movies. Okay, that could make sense. It really looks like Sin City in a lot of ways, but I think kick-ass could make sense. It's weird, like the whole thing is like, I think there's like two scenes shot in the UK and the rest of it's shot in like, Bulgaria or some other Eastern European country. Okay, but Hudson Hawk. So, first of all, Bruce Willis is only writing credit ever. And I remember this film just bombed when it came out, like with a capital B, like Siskel and Ebert hated it. Everybody hated it. It was like the, it was like the biggest joke ever. And I don't know when I actually saw it. I would have been way too little to see it when it was new. But at some point on home video, I saw it. And I always kind of thought it was kind of fun. I really liked um, Richard E. Grant as the villain. Uh, I thought he was fantastic. And Sandra Bernhardt as his... I thought it was his sister when I was a kid. But I guess she was playing his wife. Oh, um... Quinch says, getting lots of buffering. And Catherine says the same. Uh-oh. I don't know. I'll have to check my settings afterwards, you guys. It says that I'm live and I have a good bit rate. But that's all I know. It does look like it dropped a few minutes ago. So maybe it was just a stutter. But anyway, Hudson Hawk. So Bruce Willis, his only writing credit. The director. Can you guess who the director is of Hudson Hawk? It was the director of Heathers. He was hot off of Heathers. He directed Hudson Hawk. Now they say 
that Bruce Willis just steamrolled right over me. Now we've heard this from about Bruce Willis on a lot of other projects, right? So probably not surprising if that's true. Um, and Industrial Light and Magic did all the effects. And I gotta say, I don't know if the movie's been remastered or not. Like they hold up incredibly well. Uh, like seriously, for 1991, they look amazing. And if if they haven't been touched up, it's very impressive. Um, so that those those are all the good things, right? And let's look at this director for a second. This director. Um, so I kind of feel like this is a film that I don't want to use the words ahead of its time would be more likely to like this film than audiences in 1991. Um, so the director is is Michael Lehman, and just 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 listen to a few of his big um, you know some of the films that he's directed. Right. So I said Heather's. That was his big one. He was just off of Heather's um, when he did Hudson Hawk. Um, Meet the Applegates, which I never saw about aliens, but it was like a huge grossing film. Airheads, Truth About Cats and Dogs, Larry Sanders Show, The West Wing, uh, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Uh, what are some of the other big things they did? That might be all the biggest ones. I mean, I think as he got older, you know, he did a lot more television and stuff, right? But at Dexter, he worked on Dexter. American Horror Story, he was a director. Californication, he was the director. Uh, what else? Veronica Mars, he was one of the directors. So, you know, worked on a lot of big stuff. Um, and Hudson Hawk was like his second big Hollywood film. So, kind of crazy. Really good cast. Um, really pretty good effects. The, the story is definitely more like a comic book kind of story that we would see in movies today with big action pieces, big set pieces, the whole tie into like Leonardo, Di uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, ha, Leonardo da Vinci, and uh, you know, these crazy inventions and stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely akin to a lot of the films that are popular now. So kind of interesting to go back and revisit it. I would say if you have HBO Max, looks like some people said stars, it's been on stars. Uh, I think it's worth a revisit. Uh, I like a lot of old music, so the part where they're singing some of the old standards didn't bother me the way it bothers some people. Um, I get the reference to the the, the Bob Hope uh, Bing Crosby Road pictures, and I think that's kind of what they were going for, and it's a shame that audiences in 1991 just thought it was silly. Like, they just totally rejected it. They're like, nope. This is too crazy and too ridiculous, and we're not buying it. And it's kind of a shame because I, th I think it could have spawned like an entire like series or something, you know. And uh, Bruce Willis, for whatever negative things people say about him or some of the crazy movies he's made in the last couple of years, it was, you know, he was definitely at his prime for Hudson Hawk. He's, you know young and doing what he wants to do so uh, if you haven't seen that one in a while give it a check out and Andy McDowell man she steals the movie as the like the hot nun who's there to like spy on him and there's like throwbacks to some 60s spy films with James Coburn so definitely worth it worth a look that's all I'm saying worth a look um, Quinch Press says I love Hudson Hawk and then he says, I watched it a few months ago on Stars, and I see it's on HBO Max now. Whitney, you're to hydrate. Cheers to you. Hmm. Well, guys, our first Tiki Tuesday back. I don't think we're going to finish this illustration tonight. We have at least 10 minutes left, maybe a little bit longer. So we'll see if we can get some of this stuff down here roughed in. But, of course, I will be sure to share... The finished version of this on social media and on discord and everything but it's been fun getting back into the swing of things here maybe i was a little too ambitious with my first one back but we'll at least get this stuff color blocked in and get it roughed in i'm thinking maybe some like flowers up in here and stuff too but um, kind of a fun composition getting really tropical 
can kind of like smell the sea air and taste the rum in your drink and all that kind of stuff. This Tiki Idol I just put on the, the wash of color. We're gonna need a lot more detail on that. And I'm just doing like a wash of green over this whole like foliage down here, but it's going to need a lot more like shading and details and stuff. So, you know, you put your like creative goggles on and just kind of imagine how some of this will turn out. Uh, Child Time says, eventually we should have a drink and draw with you and Quench. Oh, well that would be fun. You know, we had Quench over here once for our outdoor Tiki Tuesday. That was a blast. I really enjoyed that. I don't, I don't know what you guys thought about it. You know, he did, he made us cocktails. He talked to us about all different kinds of liquor and mixers and recipes. It was a good time. I mean, it was good for me because I just had to drink. I didn't have to do any, I didn't have to make any art, so. I got to be, I got to be a passenger on that one. It was fun. You guys watching Ted Lasso? Are you into season two or are you one of the haters? Like, I think so many people who love season one are like, I hate season two. Or if not Ted Lasso, what about The Bad Batch on Disney Plus? Been loving that. I think it's really good. Now, I'm a few episodes behind, so don't spoil that season finale for me. But... Oh, hey, Kikon-san. Good to see you, man. Long time no see. How many years has it been since we've all been to a San Diego con together? It's been a lot. But I hope things are going well for you. Hope there's some good aircraft coming your way right now. I got to, I got to walk through a Gulfstream... G650 that's like, I don't know, $100 million or something? That was crazy. I have a pilot friend who, who let me check it out. It's really amazing. Uh, Catherine says, do you want to finish it next week? Well, maybe we will finish it next week. Maybe that'll be the way to do it. That's a good idea, Catherine. We could just put the brakes on it here in just a few minutes, and we could finish it next week. That could be fun. Get to see it transformed all the way. Uh, Chow Time says, I end up buying the same tiki torches you have. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I love them. I hope you guys love them, too. I got the six-pack. I don't know how many you end up with, but I've had them for, well, it's going to be a year in September, and they're still going strong. Uh, I've got those, and I've got those uh, multicolored LED just projector lights out there. And our backyard is tropical and beautiful, but some of our ivy fell on a recent rainstorm, so we gotta get that put back up, but uh, really good. Chow says, loving what if. I've been waiting to start that one, and I know it's gonna be good if, because he's involved. If you guys don't know Steven Silver, um, he was one of the main animators on the Iron Giant, so he's also involved. Wow, so good. The show has no business being this good. I'm with you, that Christmas special, oh, so good, so good. Inferno Room and spend some time with Dr. Taco. Hey, that's great. We haven't seen Dr. Taco for quite a while. Maybe he'll pop in next week. Uh, Catherine said, like, I love Ted Lasso. Quinch says, season two of Ted Lasso is different, but I still love it. I have some theories and predictions, too. Yeah, I think it's going to take a turn. I mean, uh, the producers all say that, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Quinch says, what if is so good? So I, I am waiting to start it. I have some other things to finish, but we will talk about it. And just for Quinch Press, um, I have not started, uh, crap. What's our, what's our witchy Owl House? I've not started Owl House season two just for you, Quinch Press. So we'll, we'll wait on that one. Uh, Quinch says, Iron Giant is the best. That explains a lot. Yeah, and Quinch, you would have met Stephen Silver at Phoenix Comic Con. Um, his comic book is also named Silver, so you would have seen that. Excellent. Awesome. All right, guys. We're about an hour and a half in. I think that Catherine had the great idea. We're going to lock this down. We're going to freeze it right where it is. We'll pick back up here next Tiki Tuesday. 
and try to take this to a more finished level. I think that's a great idea. Tell Time says, T'Challa makes a better Star-Lord than Peter Quill. Hmm. It's not a bad take on that. Quinch says, I'm starting Owl House Season 2 tonight. Oh. Well, maybe I'll start it between now and next week, and then we can, we can talk about it. And for those of you not watching Owl House, you are missing out on one of the greatest animated shows of our time. That's all I will say. And if Season 2 sucks, then I didn't say that. Monique says, have a great week. Yeah, everybody have a great week. Let's... um. Let's just take a minute and run the credits. I think, I don't know if we have anything on there or not, but let's see, it can't hurt. Look at those great credits. And Streamlabs gives itself a credits now? I don't even know how that works. Uh, oh, tip jar, empty. I see how it is. Um, uh, Wendy says, what's Owl House on? So it's only on, well, it used to be on Disney XD, but now I think it's just on Disney Channel. And then if you have Disney Plus, they have the previous season, but I don't think they have the newest season. I think they wait before they drop those on there. But uh, check out season one. Hey, Quinch, is season two on Disney Plus yet? Because I have it all on DVR. I don't know if it's hit Disney Plus yet or not. So I've just been waiting because I didn't want to, like, spoil it. So you guys can let me know. Uh, all right. I could talk to you guys all night, but I'm not going to because I know we're already 90 minutes. Oh, okay, so Quinch Press says season two is on Disney Plus. Well, there you go. Watch it on Disney Plus. No, no problems there. What do we do? We cover everything we need to cover. I think so. We talked about tiki mugs. We talked about. We talked about this new book, The Gilded Age of Cocktails. So good, seriously, guys. Like I was just, I, I, I'm more than halfway through it. It's so good. And then of course, Shaker and Spoon. Um, pick a box you like. I've been having so much fun with this. If you're the type of person that doesn't always find new cocktails, it's a great way to do it. Uh, I am not always the type of person to like like those kind of like subscription box things, but this has been really good and there's no commitment, which is nice. All right, uh, we did. The, what do we forget? Do we do everything? Uh, oh, a raid! Quinch is reminding me right now. We have to do a raid. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, okay. All right, let's do that. Hang on, guys. We'll do. Hey. So stay on target, get your likes, your emotes, and your cheers, and everything ready. And we're gonna rate a channel. Let's see if I can make this work. Oh, it's even gonna work, who knew? Man, I'll tell you, all these all these Twitch channels are way down in viewers from what they were during the main pandemic. It's kind of crazy. All right, guys, I love you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Here we go, right on.